Order, please. We'll call the House of Assembly Management Commission to order. I'm going to once again ask the committee members to introduce themselves. And I'll begin with myself. I'm Keith Bain, Speaker and Chair of the Management Commission. Ms. Simmons. Deputy Speaker and MLA for Preston. Ms. Maslin. Kim Maslin, MLA for Queens. Mr. McMaster. Alan McMaster, MLA for Inverness. Ms. Barkos. Danielle Barkos, MLA for Chester St. Margaret's. Mr. Mumbercat. Hi, Derek Mumbercat, MLA for Sydney, member two. Mr. Irving. Keith Irving, MLA King South. Ms. LeBlanc. Susan LeBlanc, MLA for Dartmouth North. Mr. Charlton. James Charlton, Chief Clerk of the House. And we also acknowledge the presence of Gordon Heber, Chief Legislative Counsel, and Matthew Timmons, Director of Operations and Administration. The minutes of the previous meeting were circulated in advance. Are there any corrections to the minutes required? Hearing and seeing none, I'll ask for a motion to adopt the minutes of the November 3rd, 2022 meeting. Ms. Berkhouse, do we have a seconder? Ms. LeBlanc. All those in favor of the motion, please indicate aye. Aye. Contrary minded, nay. The motion is carried. The 2021 22 audit report was circulated in advance of the meeting, and I'll recognize the chief clerk to speak to this item. Thank you, Chair. The 2021-2022 um, audit report was presented to the audit committee last year on May 30th, 2022. It contains two opinions as follows. An unmodified opinion that the House of Assembly's expenditures complied in all significant respects with the specified requirements established in Section 225B of the House of Assembly Management Commission Act for the year ended March 31st, 2022. And an unmodified opinion that the Chief Clerk's assessment of the effectiveness of internal controls of the House of Assembly is in all material respects fairly stated and that the internal controls were operating effectively for the year ended March 31st, 2022. Are there any questions or discussion? Hearing none, I'll ask for a motion to accept the 2021-22 audit report as presented. Ms. Maslin, and second by Mr. Mumbrickett. You've heard the motion. All those in favor, show your consent by saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded, nay. The motion is carried. Also, the Audit Committee annual report the 2000 for 2022 was circulated. And again, I'll call on the Chief Clerk to speak to this item. Thank you, Chair. The 2022 Audit Committee Annual Report was reviewed and approved by the Audit Committee on January 9th, 2023. It must now be approved by the Management Commission. Any questions or discussion? Hearing none, I'd ask for a motion that the 2022 Audit Committee Annual Report be accepted and approved by the Commission. Ms. Burkhouse, do we have a seconder? Ms. LeBlanc. All those in favor of the motion, show your consent by saying aye. aye. Contrary minded, nay. The motion is carried. Also, the 2022 House of Assembly Management Commission annual report was circulated in advance of this meeting. Are there any questions or discussion? Hearing none, I would ask for a motion that the 2022 House of Assembly Management Commission annual report be accepted and approved by the Commission. Do we have someone to move it? Mr. Mumbercat, do we have a seconder? Ms. Simmons. All those in favor of the motion, show your consent by saying aye. Contrary minded, nay. The motion is carried. The Audit Committee, by resolution, recommended that the House of Assembly Management Commission, or to the House of Assembly Management Commission, that a threshold for MLA's tagging capital assets of the Crown purchased by them be raised from $50 to 150 in value. 
So I'll recognize uh, Mr. Timmons, the Director of Operations and Administration, to speak to this item. Thank, thank you, Chair. Um, as you recall, at a previous uh, commission meeting, uh, we discussed uh, the tagging for divisions, and it was decided that uh, divisions would start using the government matrix. Um, so the second step in that process was looking at the members that uh, and their threshold and, and seeing what that was. So as you know, the current threshold is $50 for tagging capital assets. The audit committee over the past year has had much discussion and uh, came with, uh, decided to come bring forward a motion to raise the threshold from 50 to $150. A um, couple reasonings behind that. Uh, we felt that the threshold hasn't been looked at since it was first uh, implemented, I think back in 2010. Um, and the audit committee figured that $50, the, the human capital that's trying to track um, from point of purchase to disposal uh, $50 didn't really represent a good uh, benefit of when you're looking at cost benefit analysis. And the 150 is still much more conservative than division. So overall, even 150, raising it from 50 to 150 is still a very conservative approach um, to tagging assets uh, for members. So the audit committee, after, as I said, much discussion, put forward a motion to bring raise the uh, threshold from 50 to 150. So we're now bringing that to the commission to uh, have that motion fully carried. Okay, thank you, Mr. Timmons. Is there any discussion or questions? Hearing none, I ask, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Irving. Th uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I, uh, I wasn't part of this discussion. Maybe this was discussed. Fully support uh, the uh, recommendation here. Uh, just curious on what happens to assets now that are tagged that are $50. I have an old digital camera kicking around. I've lost it once. I found it again. Spent lots of time tracking a 10-year-old camera. Uh, it's there. It'd be nice to, to uh, get these things kind of off the tracking. As I suggest, there's lots of manpower uh, uh, being used. So is there a plan or, or are we just going to grandfather the, that situation? Mr. Timmons. So with the divisions, we did go through a process of untagging items, which was just recently completed. Um, our initial thought for members was to kind of grandfather it in because we figured it would be um, much more difficult to try to go through that process of untagging items. But we haven't really fully kind of flushed that out to see what that would look like, whether to grandfather items in or to actually go through the same process of trying to untag items. You okay with that, Mr. Irving? Yes, thank you. Okay. Is there any further discussion or questions? Hearing not, none, I would ask for a motion that the threshold for MLA's tagging capital assets of the Crown purchased by them for the purpose of inventory control be raised from $50 to $150 in value. Do we have a mover? Mr. Mubricat, do we have a seconder? Ms. Berkhaus. All those in favor of the motion, show your consent by saying aye. Aye. Contrary minded, nay. The motion is carried. Moving on along in the agenda, that uh, a copy of the proposed amendments to the House of Assembly Management Commission regulations was circulated in advance of the meeting as well. So I'm going to ask the Chief Clerk once again to speak to this item. Thank you, Chair. Um, so this item came about as a, in response to a request from an MLA uh, to look at the records retention provisions of the Management Commission regulations. Um, currently, MLAs are required to retain their records of their expenditures and claims uh, for, well, basically as long as they remain a member and for three years thereafter. Um, that's actually quite an onerous requirement and um, it doesn't really align well with what other jurisdictions do or certainly with what the government does. So uh, the audit committee took a significant amount of time with this and ultimately, ultimately came up with a recommendation that the period of record retention be reduced to seven years following the creation of the record. Um, uh, this aligns with the government's um, uh, standard for administrative record keeping. 
Um, furthermore, as the claims process has transitioned to being entirely digital now, the audit committee further recommended that the onus for keeping records shift to the speaker's administration office as it will have digital copies of all these records. Um, such as expenditures and claims. This eliminates what has become an unnecessary burden on MLAs given the transition to making claims electronically. Chief Legislative Council prepared uh, regulation amendments to give effect to this recommendation. The amendments repeal the existing Section 9 of the regulations and enact a new Section 15A content, uh, which contains the new requirements, the seven-year retention period, as well as the shift in onus to uh, uh, speakers in office. Uh, it's it's phrased as the clerk because everything is the clerk's responsibility. But in practice, it's done by speakers in office. Any <clears throat> discussion or questions concerning that? If not, I would ask for a motion that the proposed amendment to the House of Assembly Management Commission regulations to repeal Section Nine and enact Section Fifteen A be approved. Do I have a mover? Mr. McMaster, seconder, Ms. LeBlanc. All those in favor of the motion, show your consent by saying aye. Aye. Contrary by the nay. The motion is carried. Next item is the delegation of authority to the Management Commission Chair to determine the salaries of OIC appointees. I recognize the Chief Clerk to speak to this item. Thank you, Chair. Um, so this item does have uh, a particular impact on me for the reasons that will be explained shortly by the Director of Operations and Administration. Um, I don't believe it constitutes a conflict of interest. However, in of an abundance of caution, I'm going to, as a member, a non-voting member of the Commission, I'm going to step away uh, for the remainder of this item. So, okay. And I would, uh, I would ask the Chair to please call on the uh, Director of Operations and Administration. Okay. <laughs> I recognize the Director of Operations and Administration. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so this item is being put forward due to an inconsistency in the language of the Orders and Council appointing certain officers of the House. While most assigned to the Chair of the Management Commission the responsibility of determining the salary of the officers, from time to time there is one, and this one is appointing the Chief Clerk, that assigns that responsibility to the Management Commission. This differs from that of the previous chief clerk whose salary was determined by the chair. Because the management commission has the power to delegate its powers and duties to the chair or the chief clerk, it is proposed to delegate any authority under order and council to determine the salary of an officer of the house to the chair so that all such determinations may be dealt with uniformly. Any questions or discussion? Mr. McMaster. Can you say that again in a way that's uh, maybe a little more practical, or maybe even just to repeat it? Because yes. I, I think I understand what you're saying, but just for clarification. Please. Mr. Tibbins. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, so most order and councils, and I hope I get this right, uh, most order and councils um, have the, if the salary increases are written in the order and council. Uh, the current chief clerk's order and council does not say that. It says that any salary increases go through the House of Assembly Management Commission. The, the previous chief clerk was set up as all other OICs. So this one, for whatever, whatever reason, was set up that any salary increases go through the commission. So this proposal is um, putting forward a motion to give the commission the uh, to delegate that authority to the chair, to remove the commission from it. Clear as mud, Mr. McMaster. Mr. McMaster. Sorry, Mr. Speaker. Uh, so the chair being yourself, a speaker of the House and chair of this House of Assembly Management Commission, correct? Okay. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Bobrikat. Yeah, I was. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. This is something that we talked about a bit too, as well as that it used to be. It used to be uh, one way, and then for whatever reason, it was changed. And um, I, uh, yeah, I, I just, I never understood why the change was made. Do we have any reason why the change was made at the time? Uh, Mr. Timmons? 
Um, not that I'm aware of. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a tough question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to ask Mr. Hebb to give uh, an opinion as well. So just to point out the contrast, the order and council appointing me as chief legislative counsel provides directly that the that the pay be determined by the, the chair of the management commission. So this would just make it the same. And that's the way most of them are. Okay, Mr. McMaster. So Mr. Speaker, if we were hiring a new chief clerk of the legislature, for instance, I presume that if there would be a successful candidate, they would be, I presume human resources within government might look at their, who they are, what their qualifications are, and their experience and base a salary on that that would be then recommended to this committee, but instead of it going to the committee, it would now be sent to you as the chair, and then you would have the final approval. Is that kind of how this would work? To, uh, I, uh, Mr. Hebb, I'm just going to ask you the question. To, as chair, is it only relating to salary, the rest would come before the commission, or is it the entire hiring process? No, we're just, we're just talking about the pay. Just the pay. Okay. The, the, the hiring is by is is by cabinet. Okay. Okay. Mr. McMaster. So, Mr. Chair, it sounds like th this commission would sort of be giving up its power to bless the pay amount and it would be handing it to the chair of the committee to uh, look after that without it coming to the entire commission. Is that, does that sound like what we're doing? Yes. Okay. I, Mr. Hebb gave a, okay. a heads up to that. So, okay, uh, Mr. Timmons, did you? Yes, that that's correct. But it's to make it more consistent with all other OICs. That's the that's the purpose of it is to make it consistent. Okay, Mr. Irving, I think you had your hand up. Uh, I was just asking for a clarification, but I think I just got it. All other legislatures are doing it through through the chair. <coughs> Mr. Timmons. Not other legislatures, other OICs within government. Not Scotia. Not Scotia. Yeah, just within Nova Scotia. Yeah, within Nova Oh, Scotia. just within Nova yes. Scotia. Yes. Yeah. So, so do we know what happens in other provinces in terms of who determines the salary and the salary increases for the clerk? Mr. Timmons. Mm, not that I am aware of. Mr. Irving. Just one comment. Would there be some value to, uh, like, uh, I'm not understanding why it was one way or why it was changed or the reason we're changing it back other than that was the reason that we, er, that was what we used to do. What goes on in other provinces? Mr. Timmons. Uh, we, I can, we can look into that and see what we can find. I don't know off the top of my head what other uh, jurisdictions do. Ms. Maslund. So it's my understanding that <coughs> every other deputy head within government, within provincial government, they, they're done through the OIC. It's an automatic, whatever, it's the 0.3. But our chief clerk is not. So this just makes it all consistent. And why it was changed, I, I don't know. Like I just, I learned of this when we learned of it. Any further discussion or questions? Everybody comfortable with bringing this forward or would you like to, since there, Mr. Irving made a request about checking with other provinces that, that come back to the meeting or do you wanna pass the meeting now? Or pass the recommendation now? Mr. Irving? Yeah, I, I would like to know what happens in, in other provinces. I mean, the, the, the uh, the concept of the legislative branch being uh, directed by the members of the House, you know, is a, is a concept that, that I think lends me leaning one way on this issue. Um, just because government and, the, and, and, and cabinet deals with government appointed deputy ministers doesn't translate to me that the clerk of the legislative assembly needs to be dealt with that way. I don't see the, I, I, 
I don't see a need for consistency in that. So I, I would be interested to know what happens in other provinces. Uh, and, you know, it, it's, I don't have a s strong feeling on this, but, but uh, I think it would be helpful just to, to kind of understand what's happening in other places. Okay, I, I think it's, a, I think it's a important to recall what Mr. Hebb said too about, about his salary. That is something that's approved by the chair. Uh, correct, Mr. Hebb? Yes. Chair, chair of the Management Commission. Yes. So it's not, not a break with the tradition that's already out there, but you're just wanting to see what other provinces are doing. Yeah. Okay. So I, I will ask uh, for a show of hands on this one. Uh, uh, do you want to uh, delay this until the next meeting of the Management Commission, or do you want to bring it forward? All those in favor of delaying it till the next Management Commission? Those opposed? The motion is carried. There was only two votes. So, so that will be brought up again at the next Management Commission meeting. So next, next item is the uh, third quarter report for 2022-23. The financials were circulated in advance of the meeting, so I'm going to recognize the uh, director of administration. He's been busy today to speak to this item as well. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so these, uh, this graph that I circulated um, are, represents our actuals up to the end of December. Um, really, the big number to focus on is the... Uh, the bottom row, the 842,400. That is our forecasted surplus uh, for this fiscal, which uh, is in line with other non-election years. Um, the biggest reason for the surplus is due to members um, not spending their full constituency budgets or their travel allowance budgets. So um, the 842 is, is in line with uh, other non-election years. Okay, thank you. Is there any discussion or questions? Hearing none, thank you, Mr. Timmons, for that. So that concludes the agenda of the Management Commission. The meeting now stands adjourned. Thank you all for being here today.